Another big weekend of NFL football, some big fantasy football action. We break down the studs, the duds, the news, and at the end of the show, we come up with a new rule of how to define a catch. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like the video, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! Welcome in. Monday, November 28th. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back with you. Lots to talk about. Big weekend. Almost forgot what we do for a living. It's uh, been yes. so long. Since the uh, the Megalodon, then we have the recovery phase after the Megalodon, of course, mm-hmm. with multiple days in the hospital, as we do every year. We we managed to take over Twitter for a little bit. Yeah, and that then, and then Twitter takes they, over. They, they took us they, over. They, yeah. they took it back. <laughs> Good to know. So, Good to know. If you were late with the ha- if you were early with the hashtag, it was tremendous fun and just a lot of people getting real big mad online. If you were there later, sorry, you uh, <laughs> you went into a dark, dark place of Twitter. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, <laughs> yeah, this all it was born out of Nick Chubb, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a boy. It's his Thick. fault. Uh, Monday pun day today. We can rewind stud muffins, duds, lots of emotions, lots of reactions. Uh, one of the three of us is getting shamed again this week uh, because. <laughs> Guys, I did not have a good weekend. I know, man. I'm so sorry. Um, I pivoted. I asked your permission on uh, Saturday to take Josh Jacobs out of my DFS lineup Mm -hmm. due to the late addition to the injury report. And we wisely said, absolutely. (laughs) And then I lost by what? A point? Two points? Something like that to Mike and Jason. And now I'm shamed again. And I would have won by over 100,000 points. The, The process was... Correct, because a late addition onto the injury report is historically a very bad thing. But see, the process was correct also when I picked him. Sure, in Seattle for sure. And you said, "quote Ooh, you paid more for less." Yes, and I was wrong, and so were you. (laughs) I was right, and I was wrong. Oh no, 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 no! You don't get to you don't get to claim the victory. Not a real one, just a pretend one. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. We'll give you moral little, victories. Yeah, sure. Real losses, moral victories. <laughs> yeah. No. It was bad. I did everything wrong. If, if Foot Clan, if you need someone in your corner today because you made a mistake this weekend, it happens. Let man. me take you through the gauntlet. I lost to Jason. Travis Etienne got hurt. Mm. Uh, that was cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I did figure out I can still make the playoffs. Oh, f- really? Yeah. yeah. He can. Yeah. If I win the next two weeks and Mike loses them both. That's this, how I make the playoffs. Mic. Yeah, this okay. mic. Uh, mm, yes. Yeah, because we're a game apart now. And uh, I think that's true. Yeah, but you also then need uh, the other person in my division to lose to Josh's dumpster fire. Of we're not season. talking about other hypotheticals. But, but yeah, no, like uh, you're mathematically alive. Also, happy to say I pulled Zay Jones out of my dynasty lineup <laughs> Ooh. for Darius Slayton. He... Last minute. Wanted that's, to watch somebody on Thanksgiving. That's what you get for turning your back on the spot starter. Would have won against Brooks. Kept my bye week. Lost that as well. Lost everything. Yeah, uh, Wife I, left I me. You have a t- <laughs> Kids you have don't a love me. Team that you said can't be beat. Yeah, I lost that team yeah. to you. Yeah, I beat it. I scored a billion points. Didn't matter. <laughs> uh, but thank you for pointing that out. Well, I just you, figured you wanted to go through me? the whole yeah. gauntlet. Mm-hmm. I wanted to make sure you didn't miss anything. But... Um, yeah, we got some puns for you today. I wanted to just find somebody to fire today. I'm sure we can get that so, done. So, yeah. Josh, he was stuck in the fridge. Mm-hmm. Papa yeah. Josh. Did he a poor left, job. He left the cold ones in the back. Oh, man. Unbelievable. You're telling me that guy's never worked at a grocery store? I'm sure he has. 
Oh, yeah, he's lived like 100 lives. That that guy has definitely worked at a grocery store. All right, let's react to the weekend uh, as a group, as opposed to just myself. Let's do some Monday Punday. Oh, you would you like me to talk about Boss Jacobs? Or Chris God Mode? Christian Mid Caffrey. Mm, I don't oh. I don't like these ones. Christian McCantfrey. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, we're back. Yay! Jones. Taysom Nil. Da- <laughs> Dawson flops. Oh Jamichael Taste Tasty. Jamichael Tasty's my favorite one. Uh Trevor Scorrence. The Great Wilson. Well done. G- Greg Doldzilch. <laughs> <laughs> Christian 1.21 gigawatson and Amon Ross St. Crown the king king of the end of these seasons too Amon Ra getting it done uh for we I, w- I wish the Lions had won that game that would have made for four four games in a row beat the Bills they probably wish they won too but uh uh Jason and I were having a very good time with Jamichael Hasty Oh yes, and calling oh him. because why? Hasty, no, hasty. no, not because of the injury, because of of our love for Fergalicious, and then we would just say hasty, hasty, and then I was calling him Jamichaelicious, and it was just it was a great time. It was a really good time. I was every time I saw him make a play. I oh just, yeah, I know. I just thought about the fact that would have been Travis Etienne when your player gets hurt, and then the backup just has a massive game. Oh man, that's a kick right in the gooch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was kicked a lot. I it, it was even worse because, like, Etienne was my save my season because Jonathan Taylor's hurt. Yep, player, and it was all for this week against Jason because mm. I knew I needed it, and then he's hurt anyway. Like that, the injuries are the worst. You're inconsolable. There's no possible way for you to reason your way because you do everything right, and it just doesn't feel good. I mean, it, it's one thing to play the wrong player. But it's another one to play the right player and have them get hurt and then delete you. And then that's lost to history. In two weeks, I just you're just dumb and you lost. That is correct. It's not it's nothing you can't caveat it. It's not about like, oh, I caught some bad breaks. When you look back at history, loser or winner, that's all there is. So like you're Guess saying- which one I am. So, like, the the losers, we should have a history book where we can all just go in, like, a Wikipedia and put a paragraph you just, next to every loss. You should be able to buy asterisks on the platform <laughs> oh, I for, like, like currency. How like, many, just remember. How many asterisks would you have had this, this week? As many as the platform <laughs> would sell me. Yeah, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. I just wish I could have been like Al Borland, who got to play like a fourth grader in our league of record. You'll get, get it, to do and that. And get a W. Uh, Damian Harris exited with a right thigh injury, was seen on crutches following the game. He only had a handful of carries in this game. Ramondre, moving forward, should be strong and mighty. Mm-hmm. Jacoby Myers. Injured his shoulder, did not return. No, he did return. Oh, did return. Yes. That's different. It looked like he was going to be out for the game, but he did come back and he caught a few passes. So, I mean, just if, if you're looking at your Jacoby Myers line, be, you, be grateful you got any points at all. Aaron Rodgers exited Sunday Night Football early against the Packers with an oblique rib injury. It's not good. He was talking about how you know he, he couldn't turn his body. He was afraid of a punctured lung situation. So, he... He must have been hurting, and, and I don't know what that means for next week for Rodgers. Yeah, they'll they'll have to see how it goes. But he said that he wants to play so long as they are not mathematically eliminated. But then basically insinuated, if we're out of it, like I don't, I don't, I don't care. And Jordan Love, he looked really good. Like I, yeah, I know he, it was very small sample size. You know, he only the played. Spark. Uh, yeah, the backup spark, and he played the very end of the game. But the actual throws, the reads, I was pretty impressed. Aaron Rodgers. So we'll see if he comes back. Darnell Mooney suffered what is feared to be a season-ending ankle injury, was not putting yeah. any weight on it when he was carried off the field. Allen Robinson didn't play. He's going to have season-ending foot surgery. What? You yeah. didn't know this? I No. Like yeah. this, this, I feel like this came out of nowhere. No. the uh, You know, he was questionable, and then McVay said later Sunday, out for the year. So they won't have Cup. 
Probably won't have Stafford back the rest of the year is my thought with the way they're – Why would you put him back there just to get injured? I mean, they have no offensive neck injury. line. They have no receivers. Still no concussion. Did you know that? So, yeah, I saw that it was a neck injury so on the on the injury report, which obviously he's dealt with neck right, and right, spine right. and back problems, you know, from Detroit. So that was that's a little bit more serious. And I would say, yeah, give him – you know, he was dealing with the elbow issue. Now the neck, their season is over right, right now. I mean, they are, they are. I think they're like the fourth pick. I mean, they don't have the pick, of course not. Um, but I think they're like the fourth overall pick if the season were to be over today. And I don't see them winning many games going forward. No, no, I don't either. Elijah Mitchell sprained MCL. He's going to miss time. Just the third game back from injury. This Christian guy. McCaffrey also limited due to what we think is uh, patellar tendonitis, based on. Some investigative reporting with a camera and seeing one of them uh, <laughs> tendonitis bands under his left knee. As, as zoomed as we could get. Yeah, that's right. Michael Carter exited with an ankle injury. This one, I mean, uh, the the ETN one, uh, also terrible, but it's like Michael Carter with no James Robinson and Mike White looked like he was in such a good spot. But now it's going to be Mike White and uh, what, Donovan Knight? Knight, yes. Yeah. The white, <laughs> the white knight, white knight. Uh, Travis Etienne, the left foot injury, seems like he might have been able to come back into the game. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, didn't rule. They didn't rule him out. They left him on the sideline to stare into your soul, if you had started him, and just well, just hope that he. Jamichaelicious was getting it done. Yeah, Etienne said we'll be straight by next weekend, but we don't listen to the players here. Right. So we'll watch the the practice report, and I assume. Did um, I say Donovan? I'm sorry, Zonovan Knight. Yeah, it's way cooler. That's a great name. It, it does, is. Doesn't he have a cool That's nickname? A superhero name. Isn't his nickname like Bam or something? <laughs> he doesn't need one. I know, I know, but it's like even better. Like, it, look that up, Kyle. He's. Uh, I I think it is. His nickname is Bam. That is correct. That is the, Bam. Like Zonovan. The, Bam. Like the the chef. Who uh who was the who was the chef? Emerald was, Lagasse. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> that was his catchphrase. <laughs> Something like that. Uh the the tweet out of Jacksonville, Travis E team was cleared to return to the game. Uh the team decided to hold him out. They're planning on doing more tests. Hmm. Your check is in the mail. That was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. <laughs> Studs of the Week, presented by Madewell. That Josh Allen pass, first stud of the week, Josh Allen against Detroit. Um, but that pass he made to Savon Diggs to get him into field goal range was unbelievable. They said that, I believe, was like 48 mile an hour pass. Wow. When they measured it, which is... Uh, That's, oh, oh, at the very, very end? Might have been over yeah, 50. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even remember. It was a rocket. That's a that's unbelievable. And uh, on Thanksgiving, you know, obviously you're you're busy, you're in and out of some of these games. And I remember thinking, was it was it the fourth quarter or late third or something when Diggs was a goose? Oh yeah, but Thanksgiving uh, at the in the right household, it was rough, man. We got we got bombed with uh, whatever the virus is going around. We had we had to cancel. Like we didn't do any oh, no. family stuff because no Jack your dreams box. came true. Yeah, I no. I, <laughs> you probably plotted this. Uh, the dreams, except for the part where I felt pretty crappy too. Uh, that part was not great. But so th th so I wake up, I'm canceling everything, and then I'm like, okay, Stefan Diggs, my my number one dude, just cheer me up this Thanksgiving morning. And then my face was on the floor, just just fully tilted out of my mind. I mean, he came through. Yeah, he had but, a great game. Oh uh, no, yes, but, but but the ride to get to that point it, was not it, not fun. When my Thanksgiving was going on, I I watched the first three quarters live, and then I missed a little chunk because you know it's Thanksgiving Day, yeah. and then I had to rewatch that later. And I came back. I was like, wait, how did Stephon Diggs have That's like right. seventeen fantasy points? He had a great game. Totally disappeared the first three quarters. Uh, Josh Allen ended up with a good game. It was a bumpy ride for him as well. He had yes. like 20 points immediately, then didn't score for the whole third quarter. Uh, plays New England, then the Jets, then Miami. Jalen Hurts, monster rushing game, uh, 157 on the ground, 103 in the first quarter, uh, continues to be a backbone of fantasy teams. Justin Herbert, 
Hey, there he is. This was the game you wanted to see. Keenan Allen back in there. Arizona, very benevolent. Yep. And uh, on the other side, Kyler, big game as well. Yeah, it was nice to see Kyler have both Hopkins and Hollywood for the first time ever, and it coincided to a really nice fantasy day. Obviously, the matchup against the Chargers is – good and they're going on a bye week this week so it's a little disappointing but you have hope that maybe for the playoff schedule if you if you know if you're rolling with Kyler now that he's got two kind of alpha wide receivers that he'd be good and, and on Herbert's side you know Mike Williams is great but we had Keenan or we had uh um uh Austin Eckler on before the season when we were talking about Mike Williams versus Keenan Allen there was no hesitation he's like Keenan is that dude and having Keenan back I think it's going to be really good for Herbert uh, going forward. He plays the Raiders this next week, so that should be a lot of fun. Yeah, you'd hope so. Trevor Lawrence, best game as a pro, really impressive performance. Uh, Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, even Marvin Jones getting into the act, three touchdowns. It was nice to see that there might be some future there for him. He's the quarterback 11 on the season? That is that surprising to you guys? Yes. Yeah, it is to me as well. I didn't think he's been that played, played looking, every game. Looking back at the game log, it should not be surprising. <laughs> Does wow. he, has he gone on by? Uh, yeah, they yeah. did. They did go on by. Okay, but I mean, like, he, I mean, the, he's the had problem some, is, he's had multiple single digit games. That's where it feels like he shouldn't be. But if but looking back, you know, of the last what six games he's played, he's been top twelve in five of six of them. Wow, Mike White three fifteen and three, dude, Mike White. <laughs> Highest passer rating amongst all quarterbacks in week 12. <laughs> it's, dude, it. Garrett Wilson, the reborn. Yeah, the facts. Well, and, and Garrett Wilson also, I mean, if, if you didn't see the play where he scored, the where the Chicago, I can't remember the, the safety went down, was grabbing his knee, which turned into a, a massive touchdown for Garrett Wilson. But the fact that I didn't know which side of the chaos. I wanted to happen for the New York Jets of like the team is so good. These this fan base has suffered forever of with an inept, an inept team. Zach Wilson not getting it done. Do you want Mike White to come in, fall on his face so it looks better for Zach Wilson or have Mike White dominate, get a resounding victory? And that's what happened and I I guess that's what I was cheering for because yeah, that was that right was side. really really fun to watch them dominate. It sure was. Oh man, his face Elijah on the Moore? sideline. Yeah, it was two catches, but he had a huge day. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was nice to see because you have you have the Not hope. for Zach. You have the. You know what, Zach? Is he uh, Johnny Menzel? Maybe. Is he going to get a chance to start again? He'll get a chance because. He was still young. He was the second overall pick. Whether or not it's for the Jets or a different franchise, I don't know. But he'll he'll start again and and probably prove that he shouldn't. Uh, Lamar Jackson, <laughs> Bumpy Road. The fact Jacksonville made this a game changed the outcome quite a bit for Lamar because he ended up with a late touchdown pass yep. and a late bomb to Deshaun Jackson. So he ended up 254-1 and one with 89 rushing yards. He finishes the quarterback eight. That's his highest finish since week three. I don't think that this offense is functional enough for you to rely on it in your fantasy playoffs. So th does that mean that it, you bench Lamar Jackson? That's always going to depend on your options. But it's been, a, it's been a long, long eight weeks now for this offense where you've had drop passes, you've had a limited amount of weapons. I mean, if you take – last year's offense and you take Bateman and you know Hollywood Brown out of it that's what you have this year and um you know it, it's just not been pretty I don't no. know what's going on Lamar's on the injury report every week I think we need to remember that when it comes to maybe why there's a handful of these times where he throws the ball away when you'd expect him to run I don't know it's just yeah. been like if it's Lamar or Herbert I'm, I'm playing Herbert going forward if it's Lamar or Tua yes I mean there are a lot of players I play over Lamar completely agree with with that you you can't view Lamar as this locked and loaded top 3 type of quarterback every week just because he's been that in the past this offense does not have the weapons that he needs that being said this should have been like he's already quarterback 8 as of now but he should have had such a yeah. better game. Deshaun Jackson shouldn't have fallen down after catching the ball. Like that should have been a 
75 yard touchdown pass mark andrews dropped a, a an easy gimme touchdown that also would have uh won it for you in the in the wheel of shame andy um demarcus robinson had it was a tougher catch but a, a catch that a wide receiver makes which would have been a touchdown is so it i i'm not disagreeing with anything you're saying uh but it's still it, lamar jackson is, it's a very very tough situation because he can be incredible and if his guys would just catch the passes that hit him in the hands lamar jackson would have had a fantastic week i mean just to Put it into perspective. Over the last eight games, total touchdowns for Lamar Jackson. His yeah. season pace is 16. Yes. He's, so he's getting like one a week. You're talking about um, a really irrelevant option. I mean, he's going to play Denver this week. Then he plays Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. Then he plays Cleveland in Cleveland. I don't think it's getting better quickly unless you catch an outlier three-touchdown game in there. Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr, Geno Smith. Geno, 328-2. and two. Uh, Credit to the Borgogan, whose bold call of the week said Derek Carr would finally break through with a three-touchdown game, which was his first in 700 days. Ooh. Now, he's been making that call every week for the last <laughs> 658 days. No, that was pretty, pretty wild. Yeah, but you know who caught one of those touchdowns? Uh, the Island. The yeah, island he did. Yes, he did. Woo-hoo-hoo. Uh. Can we talk about the running back on that team? Sure. Oh, man. Josh Jacobs is the RB1 on the year. <laughs> 33 for 229 and 2. In fact, he re-aggravated the calf injury mid-game, or actually at the end of the game, and the team did not want him to go back out there for overtime, where he went out there and ran the ball 86 to the house. This was a rookie of the year situation. <laughs> I believe that this got stronger. this tightened calf was like a superhuman calf because he was unstoppable. He has looked the part all year, and you've got the Derek Carr stuck throwing to his favorite people only situation with him in the passing game with no Renfro and Waller. It seemed like Josh Jacobs was involved in every stinking play of the game, which, look, he was involved in 39 of them, like mm. where he was handed the ball, or he caught a pass in 39 different plays. He had over 300 scrimmage yards. I wonder how many teams haven't had that this season in a game. Like, he he was unstoppable. And he's been so good this whole year. He had, like, uh, you know, an, an illness game where he was um, was bad. But, like, otherwise, pretty much after those first two weeks, he's just been this is, fire. This is the uh, third time in the Super Bowl era with 300 scrimmage yards and two touchdowns in a single game. Priest Holmes, Adrian Peterson, now Josh Jacobs. The last one was in 2007. In our scoring Shout format. Shout out to Marvin on that tweet. Yeah. Uh, in our uh, scoring format, he was over 50 fantasy points. I mean, th- those are – it's – if you have him, shame on you if you didn't win. <laughs> shame on the rest of your team. Right, sure. Yeah. And but I, I, uh, credit I, I, to Brooks for never forgetting his, the love – for Josh Jacobs this offseason. I do like that Josh Jacobs was the – he was a late addition with the calf injury, and they're like, we'll give you 33 carries. <laughs> like, what, that seems like a, a very strange uh, decision by the Raiders. If your player says they want to go, I guess they said okay. Yeah. James Conner was great. He looked uh, good. Yeah, he had a lot of, of, of great tough juicy. runs. 120 rushing yards, uh, scored through the air. Austin Eckler got it done in the end, only 5 for 20 on the ground, and yet still a great fantasy day, 11 for 60 and 1 through the air. He's a wide receiver. Nick Chubb, big week for Chubb, won the ball game on the final play in overtime. Mr. Brian Robinson, yeah, 18 for 105, caught a pass for a touchdown. Yes. Big week for Brian Robinson. What's tough is that he has been so difficult to project which games he'll be great. Houston was supposed to be great for Brian Robinson. It wasn't. But he was great in this one. Yeah, and and it really is hard to predict. Like, Antonio Gibson should have had a good game in this one. And, and, and he was down to 12 opportunities, just nine carries 
after seeing double digit carries the the previous three weeks. It felt to me like a Robinson is cooking situation, hot hand type of thing. Um, although the target was strange in that situation to have it drawn up for him. You know, we were speculating whether Gibson was banged up. I don't know what the situation was. You don't with Antonio Gibson. You don't know for sure, right? Yeah. Like a normal, you never know. a normal situation. You're like, ah, oh, he must be banged up. This one could have just been hot hand it, for all we know. It could have been, and uh, Jonathan Williams was getting some carries for the Mander, so a third running back was introduced into the mix, which is I mean, not get, great for fantasy purposes. But the so I had messaged our Slack, and I'm like, I I can't find anything, but it seems like something happened to Antonio Gibson. As there's, there was this shot of him on the sideline earlier in the game. He had the, the giant coat on, and he looked like a sad, sad man. He like, could have missed a blitz pickup and, for all we know. Yeah, I mean, so, it could have well, been he, something. He did come in yeah, later after later. that, so he he's not injured. This wasn't an injury. I I think Andy's 100% right. I think Brian Robinson had the hot hand, and they just kept rolling with him, and it was a good decision. Jamichael Tasty Hasty, filled in. Hasty. Filled in. It was mostly um, in the passing game that he filled in and did anything. He was pretty bad on the ground 12 for 28 yeah, don't worry about that uh next week is detroit so you'd hope that etn can get back out there aaron jones aj dillon both with big games Dude. jones through the air dillon on the ground aj dillon finally finally looked <laughs> like <laughs> we got there he looked like aj dillon eight for 64 had the rushing score it looked uh, looked like he should have for the entire season. So I don't know if this is just a, a positive sign of of maybe he found himself or it was just a one-off against the Eagles. Samaj uh, P. Ryan, big week. Dude. Looked good. He did. There are plays that he play, you know, where he, he looks the same as Joe Mixon out there yes. sometimes. Uh, Kenneth Walker, two touchdowns, just 14 for 26 yeah, on the ground. Don't look at that part. I mean, it's been that way for what, a couple weeks in just, a row? Yeah, two. two weeks. 10 for 17. 14 for 26, 1.7 and 1.9 against Tampa and Las Vegas. The Rams next week. Tampa makes a little bit more sense. It was very surprising in this game against the Raiders, but you, you don't really care for fantasy when he gets two touchdowns. And like that first touchdown run was Which unbelievable. Was Zeke, 16 for 92 and one. Mike, are you finally going to sit Lazard for Zeke in our league? You know it. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson, 10 targets for nine, uh, nine receptions, 76 yards. Yeah, real Austin Eckler situation here. Uh, Rashad White ended up with a pretty good game, 9 for 45 through the air. 100 scrimmage yards, yeah. I still was hoping you'd get that touchdown from him in this game, sure. but a nice week. Isaiah Pacheco got into the end zone. Ronald Jones on display for <laughs> some reason. Because <laughs> this, this is what Andy Reid has to do. Yeah. So how he gets his kicks. Quick break, back with the wideouts. Jason, any thoughts on your uh, hesitancy around Justin Jefferson that we mocked you for? Uh, yeah, he's super good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we, we said there's no situation that you ever sit him, and uh, this is why, because he's so freaking good. I was I was worried about Kirk Cousins and the left you, tackle situation, but that game that game was yes. uh, you said bonanza. So, you said so many negative things that you actually had to come back and say, of course I'm playing Justin Jefferson. Right, because I did not want people to assume, well, those negative things say you should bench him because he's Justin Jefferson. You don't bench him. No, he's he's super good. And uh, started the game with a touchdown. I, I Adam Thielen, 10 targets. Yeah, I mean, Adam Thielen, 10 targets, 9 for 61 and a touchdown. Mac Jones, I, I don't know if we talked about him in the in the studs, but he was unbelievable. Who saw this game being the one to crush the over on Thanksgiving and be the, like, I did not see did not this either. as the fantasy offensive outpouring that it was. Garrett Wilson, rookie wide receiver. Two touchdowns. He's been great. Heath Cummings put out a tweet. Four games with Zach Wilson. Um, I'm sorry, without Zach Wilson, he's averaging almost 20 fantasy points per game. And seven with Zach Wilson, he's at eight fantasy points per game. Uh, they'll be without Zach Wilson next week. So that'll be a good sign for Garrett Wilson. So. Amon Ross St. Brown, Chris Godwin, Zay Jones. Zay Jones led the NFL Dude, in receiving this week. Zay Jones. 
Monster. 14 targets, 11 for 145. Uh, Detroit, Tennessee, Dallas coming up. Nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, Should have played him. Jay yeah. Jones? Yeah. No, I'm tired of myself. I should have uh, played, well, played him. Clearly, you didn't, have, uh, you didn't have a spot. No, no. Had to play Darius Slayton. Yeah, Zay Jones, the spot start. You can always start at Detroit next week. I, I think Chris Godwin is the one to me. You can't go away from Chris Godwin. Every single <laughs> play feels like it was going to Chris Godwin. Mike Evans can't catch the ball. Can't. I mean, I don't know what's going they on. They missed on a lot of deep plays. Can't say Mike uh, Evans couldn't get a good target. Yeah, every single – I mean, he had plenty of targets, but they weren't catchable. This will be – this. I mean, it's the same story for these guys that is – been that way for the whole career Mike Evans always has had goosey games right where he, he either has the one catch for two yards and a touchdown or he disappears and then he'll have three touchdowns the next week well but let's have that circle back but in the meantime regardless of whether Evans has a good game or not Chris Godwin is not going to have bad games going forward no. he might not always get in the end zone but he's he is just the clear chain mover possession guy that Brady's going to go to and the targets are short enough where they're very very reliable they're not going to hit on 50 percent of these they're going to be up at 70 percent and uh rocking in all PPR formats I mean Mike Evans had nine targets yeah and he caught two of them that's yeah. that's by far the lowest catch percentage of the year he had 11 targets three games ago where he finished with 40 yards I mean his targets yeah. to yards ratio over the last three games He's on pace for 150 targets and 700 total yards. This is why I, I kind of push back against the idea that Brady's Brady this year. He hasn't been Brady this year. All right, they're, they're not scoring like they used to score. He's still got weapons. He's missing on throws I, I'm not used to seeing him miss on. Um, this game was one that they should have had. They yeah, well, should have put it away and they lost it. What's funny is um, – a lot of the deeper targets to Mike Evans, they looked like replays of the previous miss, and they were all long. Yes. He was overthrowing Mike. Yes. You you know, it wasn't like back in the day when Peyton, you know, in his final season, just couldn't get the ball downfield. It's like, why are you overthrowing Mike Evans over and over and over? Um, like I said, Zay Jones, eleven for one forty-five, had a two-point conversion. Uh, I play Darius Slayton over him who did get dragged down on the one-inch line mm -hmm. on a 40-yard touchdown. That would have uh, would have been nice if it was a little bit further. T. Higgins, nine Ooh, yeah. targets, seven for 114 and one. Really He's good. Really large man. Very difficult to defend. Jamar Chase should be back yeah. next week, but that yeah, does, doesn't, that doesn't change how I believe about T. Higgins. Christian Watson, another touchdown. Dude, he is. Too explosive to bench. He is so fast yeah. which in the same thing for for Lazard of having nothing until Jordan Love came in that the same with the same was for Christian Watson like it was so strange because they were having success on the ground the Packers I I suppose that's where the yards were coming from but it's like you I looked at halftime and there's just it's, it's like guys have one catch zero two catches and Aaron Jones kind of had the most but then Watson got hit on uh what is the crossing route and he is that's that's why you took that's why they took him in the second round cuz no one could catch Crystal Watson extreme athleticism yes. it, it's it's hard to start a player when you say how many receptions did he get four how many last week four how many the week yeah. before four but it's also hard to bench a player when you say well what was his fantasy <laughs> finish wide receiver 2 5 and 8 a top 10 Wide receiver in back to back to back weeks, his athleticism is outstanding. It's a lot like Beckham's rookie season. A crosser route for Beckham went to the house often. Um, players took angles on him that they thought were normal angles, and then he Tyree killed them mm -hmm. up the sideline. Uh, you can't bench him right now. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins got into the end zone. DeAndre Carter said, Hey, I'm Josh Palmer this week, and yeah. went seven for 73 and a touchdown, and Keenan scored as well. Tight end studs, Dalton well, hold on, Schultz. Hold on, hold on. You gotta, <laughs> we got to at least point out DJ Moore here. DJ Moore put up four for 100 and a touchdown against the Denver Broncos. Why are you shaking your head? Because we don't need to. We you, just ignore DJ Moore. That would be the best thing for fantasy players. Uh, you have to acknowledge when he has the good game. You have to. I don't have to. Well, the nice okay. thing is he's going on by. Yeah. So 
<laughs> and I mean, then he gets what Seattle. relevance is there? I mean, I'm proud of him. Good job, DJ. It was the first game with Darnold, and you have false hopes. Yeah, congrats. Dalton Schultz, my awesome great. start of the week. <laughs> yeah. <I'm, laughs> it was One fantasy point the week, in the dude. first half, two touchdowns in the second. <clears throat> uh, Travis Kelsey scored again. Hawkinson scored. Njoku with the catch of the year. Oh, my word. That was like. To, win, to save the game. I mean, it was a fourth down, right? I mean, yeah. it was a fourth down game saving one handed touchdown. It was like the <clears throat> the catch that we just gave Mad Dap for Cole Komet the week prior, except this one was in the end zone for a much more important moment in the game. But that was great. And what was really important is if you look at the routes run. Last week when David Njoku came back, mm -hmm. he was still far behind Harrison Bryant. Uh, this week, completely flipped. He's back to his normal role. So you can have David Njoku starting with full confidence with the sole exception now of there is a quarterback change. Yeah, I was going to say. You, that's and you a might big... say like, oh, well, that, it should be an upgrade over Jacoby Brissett. I could easily see Voldemort coming out here and having some stinkers. He has not played real football in, what, like two years? I don't know how long it's been, but that's what it feels like. Yeah, and I mean, I, I'm all, I'm here for it. <laughs> and how long was the Dark Wizard banished? He was he was banished for he missed a full season, not uh, suspended, and then he was suspended for um, what ten, eleven games, yeah. whatever, however many games it is now. Um, and now the Dark Wizard is he's back, just like the book said. <laughs> <laughs> Foster Moreau just made. Mike, look good <laughs> at the last moment of the oh, yeah, last snap of the game. Hey, Had some nasty drops in this one. Three for 33 and a touchdown. The the king of 40 yards. Right, I mean, 33. He's right in line with, uh, with with what he normally does. But, yeah, he got the touchdown and uh, saved saved the game for the Raiders. Saved the, the DFS matchup for me. All right. That was Studs of the Week presented by our friends at Madewell. Don't. Wait to upgrade your denim game. Seriously, upgrade. Go to madewell.com today and get $20 off your next pair of jeans. Use the code FOOTBALLERS20. Pooped in his big boy pants. Well. Oh, man. What, oh, what man. What do you do? There's some poopy, poopy, poopy pants. What do you do if you are the Denver Broncos? Russell Wilson against Carolina. You look for a quarterback in the offseason. Where? I, any, anywhere. I mean, I'm, they don't, they don't I have mean, picks. Uh, and they have all the money locked up into them. They have no there's choice. There's nothing I, they can do. There's I am nothing talking, they can do. I am talking about a bringing in a backup, a backup level. You know, people bring in a Nick Foles or the Andy Dalton type. There will be someone out there. And I promise you that person is better than Russell Wilson. That whoever it is, uh, 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 Col uh Colt, Unlimited. Mc Colt McCoy, you know, I don't know but if he's a free agent, but like in anyone, any competent backup quarterback in the NFL, which not all backups are competent, but any competent backup would be better than what you're getting from Russell Wilson. He's just outrageously bad. Yeah, but that would be like. That would be like taking Aaron Rodgers and benching him for the next three years while you paid him $100 million, and then you play Jordan Love over him. I've never seen it. Nobody's ever done that. Nobody has ever. That would be it's playing. Take some that courage. would be paying. Jaco played Jacoby Brissett over Voldemort for the next four years. Nobody has ever sat a $100 million man for Colt McCoy. Yeah, but yeah, they need to. It's, it's <laughs> the contract. Because there's, there's some guys looking at the list of free agent guys. You could go after the plant man, Tom Brady. Uh, but like Jimmy Garoppolo, what's happening with him and the Forty ers They're but stuck with Russ. I know. Like, I'm, like the names who are viable, they can't afford to pay them. Watching the game and just really focusing. I mean, I couldn't believe there. There's guys wide open. I'm like Russ. Why aren't you throwing? Why aren't, he's holding the ball? Holding the ball, runs backwards, takes a sack, and it's like they're the guys are wide open. What is happening? This will 100% fall at the feet of Nathaniel Hackett. They'll replace him this offseason. There will be new hope born into the Denver market. I mean, this was a top six MVP odds quarterback before the year. Dude. Like, And I they will. the hope will be found in, I mean, the same way that you talk about Cliff 
who, by the way, hashtag fire Cliff. Yes. <laughs> Bring in Sean Payton. <laughs> give him the keys to the castle. Whatever let draft him, pick you got to give up for Sean let Payton. Let him do what, and make him the GM. Let him do whatever he wants to the organization. The world is your oyster, Sean. You may look like a weird little man on these morning shows, <laughs> but you can coach a football game. Where's his neck? I see Anybody it. seen his neck? I, I see it too. I don't want to make fun of the I dude, mean, but like, I, I'm so happy to hear you say this because I've never talked suit. about this. He's not this, a suit guy. But like, <laughs> he just looks so weird next to him. It's <laughs> like everyone looks like a normal person. <laughs> Mike is just not, <laughs> he's not Sean in. Sean Payne just looks like, what's so I mean, Something's, something's going on something's there, going, but, but you're an awesome but you're a coach. great coach. Get in there. Yeah, come on down to town. You look we, good on the sidelines, man. Just, Wear I'm, yourself a sweater. I'm, I don't know I'm what's going so on. I'm so happy someone else has seen it. I've never said anything, but is I've, it a shoulder pad? I it's think, a shoulder maybe, thing, man. Maybe it's a shoulder pad thing. He's is he getting? He's padding the shoulders. Is, is he getting punked? <laughs> Like, check, dude, these were these were really in in 1988. I don't. Know, I up. don't know what it is. He looks real weird on there, but bring him in. This is a pro Sean Payton podcast. This is a pro <laughs> Sean Payton podcast. It is. I mean, some of his interviews this off season <laughs> or this season while he has not been coaching are the best I've ever seen. You know, in my he says life. He wants, he's he's willing to come to Arizona. Oh my goodness! There's two teams that he's he's oh, talked about. Oh, nothing would make me happier. Um. Yeah, they're going into the bye week. If you wanna, if it wants to be the good bye week for for Cliff, that's fine with me. No, that I thought they they hashed some things out. Kyle, well, anyways, the Kyle whole point Kyle. of that <laughs> giant diatribe was the fact that you you look at you look at Kyler and you say, well, it's the head coach's fault. I mean that that's been said a lot. So that will be the that's the only thing you can tell yourself when you've paid Russell Wilson what you paid him. Yeah, and you can't get out of the contract. You can't get out of the coach. So right. Yep. Uh, running back, duds. You know, you had Alvin Kamara. Oh, man. The offense is too bad. The offense is too bad to rely on anybody. We talked about, uh, on the playoff primer episode, we talked about both the fact that he has such a good playoff schedule, but then in, when looking at trades, that the run up to that playoff schedule was so tough and bad. I mean, you, you've got Tampa Bay coming up. That's terrible. And then the bye week. So and then this last week against San Francisco, obviously one of the best defenses, if not the best defense in the league. So it's going to be a tough stretch. But if you can make it to the playoffs with Kamara, I think he'll be phenomenal once they get there. There were there were down weeks from big names: Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey was a tough one. Yeah, it cost me big time in a league. Eleven for thirty-two on the ground, four for seventeen through the air, didn't score. Yeah, whatever. You're going to move on, and you're going to move forward with McCaffrey. Tony Pollard finally slowed down for him, 18 for 60, didn't get into the end zone. I think the big one that, look, I mean, we said that we wouldn't go away from him yet last week, and we were wrong. You should have. Damian Pierce, 5 for 8. This offense with Kyle Allen, it was like just a waste. Three plays, and it was either a turnover or mm -hmm. a punt. It was It was the most pathetic offensive performance I've seen in a long, long time. And Damian Pierce just can't do anything. You know, Ian uh, Harditz put out the tweet talking about negative six rushing yards before contact on 15 carries. You know, it's hard to lay all of that at Damian P Pierce's feet when the offense has Kyle Allen and nothing. Yeah, the, every single statistic that you saw from the, the Houston Texans side of the ball in that game came in complete and utter garbage time. Uh, you know, Nico Collins ended up with a fine PPR performance. All of it came against backups when Tua was sitting, and then it was like, okay, the Texans can score 15, 16 points at the end of that game, whatever they scored. But that was because the game was over at halftime. I mean, this offense was a putrid. But you're going to have to try to find another option. I mean, than Damian Pierce right now. Cleveland, Dallas, Kansas City? Uh, no. No. No, thank you. I mean, Cleveland. Cleveland it, should be okay. It, it's just not going to be. It's not going to be. It's it's very scary because of the fact this game script is what's been hurting them. They get blown out of the water to start the game, and then I mean, look at look at Tua. We uh, I doubt we'll bring him up in the in the court. We didn't bring him up in the quarterback duds, but yeah, he had like three hundred yards. Yeah, but he he had a horrible week. Yeah, I mean, it was like twenty fantasy points against Houston because defensive 
One, there was one interception that went down to like the five. You eliminate that drive. There was another that was a fumble recovery return for a touchdown. They pulled him in the middle of the third quarter. If you don't participate in the first couple touchdowns against Houston, you're done. Yeah, it's it's wild how bad a matchup it is for quarterbacks, even though they are not good at stopping uh, the they, air yeah. game. But, but this, this week, if there's ever a franchise, a team – a crowd that's going to get up for a matchup, having Voldemort come to town. Maybe sure. Damian Pierce is a little Dumbledore. Maybe this week. <sighs> guys, guys. <laughs> no. I, I, look, I, I agree, but I don't think anything would make me happier oh. this weekend yes. than seeing the Texans <laughs> just, just vanquish. Yeah, yeah that's oh, good. Spelliamus. <laughs> There you go. Uh, Antonio Gibson had a horrible, horrible, horrible week. Yes, he did. Wide receivers, the big disappointment, Terry McLaurin. Yeah. Uh, four for 48 in this game. Curtis Samuel, zero targets. Jahan Dotson, one target. Um, You know, variance happens at wide receiver. It was Atlanta. When you had – And Brian had, Robinson scored the touchdown. There's someone else. Who was the other passing touchdown? Or Bates. Touchdown? Yeah. yeah. What are we doing there? Throw that to The Terry. motel, as I call him. Uh, I Mike like Evans, like two for 31. Tyler, avoid? Two for 31 on nine targets. Sorry, personal gripes. Uh, Tyler, Tyler Void, I like Tyler that. Tyler Avoid. Oh. Yeah, his time is probably done. You know, what's funny is the splits before this season of Tyler Boyd when he was missing either Jamar Chase or T. Higgins was great. He had, you know, 75% of his games were basically a wide receiver three or better, uh, and then this season, his splits, he was really was good. Say, get ready for when Chase gets back, he'll have a blow up game. Yeah, I was going to say, he was really good this season when the other two guys were on the field, and now has been bad with them off. So I I don't think it's someone that you can't play, especially Kansas City coming up. Usually the offenses on the other side end up with a lot of counting points because you got to keep up, but it, it doesn't feel good. These, these are a couple dud games from Boyd. Debo Samuel got banged up in this one, three for 43, came off the field. I think he came back in. Christian Kirk, four for 46 on nine targets. It was a Zay Jones game. Juju. This one was... My one fade of the week that did yeah. something uh, positive no, you, for, you for were, a fantasy player. You were correct on this one. He was returning from the concussion, and they were using him sparingly. Like, this was not a... Juju was out there the whole entire time and just somehow had a terrible game. No, he was a part-time player. Juju, uh, before going down to injury, 86% of snaps, 88% of snaps, 83% of snaps, got injured um, a couple weeks ago where he only played 38% of the snaps. This week, he was back on the field, played 38% of the snaps. We, at one point in the game, Mike and I were watching, we're like, is Juju not not playing? Right. Like, we hadn't noticed him on the field. We hadn't seen him, and then we, and then he he got in and and was involved. But what do you do going forward? Obviously, you would you would expect him to eventually go it's, back it's to a, a starter, bench. right? It's a bench situation until um, he goes out and gives a good fantasy performance for me, because he's not the type of player like DeAndre Hopkins coming back into your lineup that you he's integral to the game plan. Like they can build a game plan around MVS, Sky Moore, um, you know, three different tight ends. To me, this was just like, you know, a different uh, – like even Kelsey after the touchdown, it kind of went away from Kelsey. It was sure. a lot of MVS. The The defense was focusing on the tight ends. Me personally, on the road the next two weeks against Cincinnati and Denver, I'm going to wait. Yeah. If if I can get some clarity from the team like this week, Andy Reid could come out and say, you know, we were just being extra cautious. We'll put him back to full time. I would play him then against the Bengals. Because if you're not willing to play him against the Bengals, against the Broncos, that's a tough play. Then you have the Houston the matchup after that, which we've kind of laid out the – there's risky business here. That's that's three straight weeks that you're going to be nervous to play Juju. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's okay. I All mean, right. I feel like at this point, point of the year, he's in that category of the, like the aforementioned Zay Jones and Darius Slayton mm -hmm. where you're like, you're going to play the best matchup situation for those wide receivers and just let the chips fall and agreed uh gabe davis four for 38 not a big day on thanksgiving drake london two for 29 it's greatest game of his career with marcus mariota that was super disappointing the first game without kyle pitts you'd hope that he'd step up and and uh, you know demand more targets four targets josh palmer five for 56 underutilized in this one george kittle three for 26 
Tyler Higby. Yeah. Full goose. Oh, boy, Mike. I Higby know. and Juwan Johnson, goose? Yep. Those are oh. like your two love children. Mike, Higby goes to Seattle. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, who's the quarterback? That, it's Tyler, not going to be Matthew Stafford. Tyler Higby, that was, I, I kind of talked about him on Sunday Live of – with everything that had happened to the team, it was he was a terrifying start. Jawan Johnson. Did you see him get hit in the face? He, uh, McVay? No, no, no. <laughs> yes. No, yeah. I saw McVay. Yeah, I said, And I, that was a brutal hit. Yeah. yeah. That was like a like you should see a chiropractor. Um, no, I'm talking about Jawan Johnson. Oh, the ball hit him in the face. The yes. ball hit him in the face. I was going to highlight. He you would have scored that. He had the two targets and but, uh, but a, face. a nasty uh, – should have caught. He had an end zone target. That ball he never was, should have been thrown. Yes, and yet was right on him, and it could have been a touchdown. Yeah, there was the defender's hand kind of face guarded him, and he was on track to be Juwan Johnson. Was just just nothing but a touchdown on the weekend, and he gave you nothing. Why don't defenders just put their? They always put their hand in between the ball. They should just go up and guard their eyes. You can't see they, the they ball. Done it. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I wanted it to be the first one where the ball gets stuck in the face mask. For, for a touchdown. Oh, well, like Unnecessary necess roughness. Yeah, 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 that would have been amazing. Uh, Dawson. Necessary roughness. Yeah. Dawson Knox well, and Greg the, the, Dulcich uh, both were disasters. Uh, for Juwan Johnson was a goose. It, Taysom Hill, what do you make of this? This was the first weekend after the team had said, he's going to be more involved. We got to get him back out there. And it was just a complete dud for him as well. The, the offense had zero points going into the fourth quarter. I mean, this was a dis – a disgusting offensive performance against San Francisco, a great defense. Um, you just don't know. It's like Taysom Hill's the guy that once – if you're playing the game of taking him out and putting him back in, I mean, wh who are you taking him out for? Are you taking him out for Higby? Taking him out for Juwan Johnson? Are you right. taking him out for Dulcich or Knox? I feel like you're just kind of stuck they, they and had, hope they have a better offensive performance. They had zero points entering the fourth quarter because they, in fact, left the game. Did they? With zero points. Oh, they never scored. They did not. I, that's right, because they uh, Kamara fumbled on the one yes. centimeter line. Yeah, this is the third week in a row that Taysom Hill's been over 40% of snaps, and that has not been translating to fantasy success. Yeah, so he was the one who passed that ball to Olave, Kyle? Yes, yeah, sadly. I, oh, the, the, the NFL the needs catch, to no fix catch. this. I mean, there's a common sense element to these receptions. That needs to change. When you catch the ball, which means securing the ball in a clear and obvious way, and then make moves, and then go to the ground. And I'm I'm talking about the Hunter Henry play. You had the sure. Friar Muth play. The or no, sorry, Jesse James play from years ago. Right. The Alave play. That you had a brutal. You had uh, several this weekend where it's like you're making it harder NFL on yourself than you need to with the, uh, trying the letter of the law, this idea that a catch represents, you know, securing the ball and then taking two steps and then going to the ground. Like, I feel like they have to have some kind of rule base. Otherwise, it's all... They keep editing the rule of the catch, and they you just my, can't get it my right. My problem is is the, the, the whole kind of, like, intellectual dishonesty of the ground can't cause a fumble ordinarily. The knee going... The knee makes you down. So you secure the ball, and your knee goes to the ground... That's your down moment once you know you're secure. Then you go through the end of the catch, or sorry, the end of the tackle. It's just so ambiguous that everybody with your eyeballs knows. And I know you do have to write something down and say, hey, this is how we're going to enforce it. Mm -hmm. But if all the eyeballs say one thing and your rule says something else, you have to go. And that's why they've had to go to the drawing board on this, what, three, four, five times? It's just a common sense thing where, like, especially that Olave play, like, Caught, secured, put in running formation, knee down, still not a catch. Yep. Let's fix that and let's fix the uh, the toe heel. Toe heel tap. Get that crap oh, out that of here. You know what sucks, was so man. funny about the toe heel is that we had a similar play. Yes. Who was it? That I can't remember who caught, caught the touchdown on the sideline where his, his shin came they, down. Yeah, his, it was like Marvin his, Jones. Was it Marvin? His his ankle bone yes. touched down yep. right before his knee hit out. And that counted. That was yeah. a touchdown. But if it was his foot and his heel had hit out, it would have been a no catch. Why don't you just change it to college rules? Let's get one foot. No, Let's I'm, make it more exciting. I'm, I'm good with two feet, but it's like if you touch. Two feet or two you, toes, Mike? Two, toe, two toes, different feet. So you can you want the you want the uh, heel. Yeah, give me two toes, one yeah. foot. You yeah. want the heel. Because that's just one foot. Heel without foot to count. 
Yes. So any part of the like foot. If, if your if your two toes extremity. come down and then your heels come down in, but you were clearly in with your toes, that should be a catch to but me. But what about the the back heel thing? You don't have to finish the step if you're going backwards. I don't think. Or what do you mean? Yeah, that's the that's yeah, the controversy right what, now. What is, Mike's saying is that if you catch it with your toes down and then your heel comes down out of that bounds, should be a catch to me. Be, it, it, Mike saying you, it should be you a catch. Pos, you because if the it ball, was the you're... opposite direction and you put the two toes down, two toes is enough. For a completed, what about shoelaces? The ground. What do we do with shoelaces? Mm, nope. If you, if you I think untie they, your shoe, does that, that count? would be really dangerous. I think you'd have but a lot might of be players worth it. out of there. Really long shoelaces, like <laughs> four or five feet long. What's his? Uh, what's his face? The quarterback could come back. Drag the lace from Michigan. Denard Robinson. Yeah. What do you have? A shoelace catch? Yeah, well, he, no, he always played with his shoes untied. Why do you do that? Oh, oh, I don't like, know. That's like Mike. You know how many times over the last five or six years <laughs> I've gone, Mike, your shoes untied, and he's like, yeah. Okay. That's the During style. a pickleball During game. During a pickleball game. Yeah. That was, yeah, I do it on purpose. No, I don't do it on purpose. That's because the, the shoe just won't stay tight. And I'm like, I'm so not going to double up. knot. You yeah. give up right yep. in the middle. That's been, what that is? You I, won't wait, double wait, knot? Wait, 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 wait. I've been defeated. You said I'm not going to double knot no. like there is some problem. I got to go way down there? You're... You're anti double knot? I don't want to double knot the shoes, man. What's wrong with a double knot? That's it's, like so cop when I'm doing sports, you know what I do? Right. Double knot. I double knot my So shoes. that your shoes aren't untied during the match. Right. Yeah. Well, look, some people want to be a dork. <laughs> <laughs> uh you lost your fantasy uh week on that Alave catch no catch? It cost me a week, yeah. And how'd you feel about that play? Was that was it a catch to you? It was a catch and I just I get to join you in sadness, Andy, this week. <laughs> see, yeah. I I, com I completely see what Andy is saying on the intellectual honesty and dis when I saw the play, I oh, thought no catch. Like I but I thought no catch based upon the rules. He didn't get a third it, it was it was two feet, no football move. It was three feet. Go watch it. No, I I, I watched it this morning <laughs> I did after too. you said that and I yeah. almost commented back, but I knew you were having a hard morning, so I just left it be. But um It yeah. was three. Well And his knee hit the ground. After the two. If the knee hit, yeah, I'll watch agree, it. Again, but ag agree to, to disagree. <laughs> two full steps and then falling to the ground where, yes, your legs do hit the ground when you fall to the ground. Didn't complete it through. But by rule, I didn't, like, when it was being reviewed, I thought that won't be a catch. So I wasn't surprised when it was overturned. But by did the human being catch this football like that rule, yeah, I, I believe he caught the ball. So you know you go you go to the the rules if you can, but I just don't know that you're ever going to be able to get it perfect. Yeah, well, that's because they use language like uh, perform any act common to the game after the catch. Falling I mean, down that, is very common to the game. <laughs> well, so by the by that rule, I mean that literally that's how it's written up. It's perform any act common to the game. Tuck the ball away, extend it forward, take an additional step, turn up field, avoid or ward off an opponent, and what maintains if, the ball while he does that. What if we just had, like, a child <laughs> in the booth, and you go, hey, kid. Was that a catch? Did you catch that? Every game. And then the kid will go, yeah. <laughs> and it'll be real easy. A child. Yeah, that's actually a really good. <laughs> the catch good, child. The, ca the one. And then the, you only Every get, game. You get, two, you get like a two-year window of being the catch child. Because yeah. eventually that you'll, child's going to get big-headed, big yeah. and he's going to start well, questioning be, himself. You'll get all skeptical yeah, and it's like gotta mad be, at the world. got to be young enough. I'm thinking like four, five, yeah. you're out at six. Well, you, you have to. they have to be able to catch themselves. That's fair. That is absolutely to fair. To know what a catch is. Yes. And once they know... They can be brought up to the booth and paid big money to be the catch child. The catch child is the <laughs> is the future. I just want this catch child to have to be talking to the referees through the the headset and the booth from his catch child there, drone. Uh, uh, yes. uh, catch child, it's a catch. <laughs> <laughs> Just goes, goes over the loudspeaker. Catch. Yeah, they don't. They don't have the the main ump uh, announce that they go. Okay, uh, we're gonna go to the catch child. Uh, uh, he yes. did not catch the ball. <laughs> no dropsies. Perfect. I think we. I think solved we solved the, the problem. Yeah. That is it for today's episode. Waivers tomorrow. Streamers tomorrow. Recovery for the rest of the day. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. See you we tomorrow. You. Or enjoy the game tonight, too. Goodbye. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.